In this video we're going to discuss the BGT or the Basisregistratie Grootschalige Topografie as it is known in the Netherlands. It is similar to the Bach but slightly more complicated and it needs a little extra effort. Let's start at the beginning. In the Netherlands we've seen that our national data infrastructure consists of an interconnected set of key registries and some of these are within the domain of geoinformation. For topography, we even have two base registrations, one for topography and one for large-scale topography, known by their abbreviations BRT and BGT, or BRT and BGT. That they are set up separately has to do with their history. Topography used to be part of the military, and later the cadaster, and large-scale mapping was primarily used by municipalities and utility companies. We expect them to slowly merge together as they share a lot of common ground nowadays. So let's focus on the one with the most detail, the large scale base map or the BGT. This one is actually a combination of two things. It can be seen as a very detailed map, but also as a sophisticated data set. Behind this data set is a quite extensive data model. For every object type that you can see here, there is an exhaustive list of attributes. And every attribute in that list has, again, an exhaustive list of values that it can have. Apart from that, there is an important topology rule for objects on ground level. The whole of the Netherlands, every square millimeter of it, is mapped once and only once. No overlaps and no holes. Every part of the Netherlands is either in one object type or in another, but never in two at the same time. Using the BGT as a map is very simple. It could be loaded as a WMTS service like any other background layer in PDOK, but using the data itself can be a hassle, and that is why there is a plugin that can be used to open the BGT data. So let's start by downloading a bit of data first and then using QGIS. This is the PDOK download site. Here you can find what you want to download. So if you zoom into, for example, Delft, and you have a look at this area here, you say, okay, I'd like to download the large scale map for this area. And this is where you can say, for example, I need just a part of the university area. So for example, this part. Now you have a selection, a specific area, uh, a format city GML is good, but here you can see there is a lot of things that you can switch on and off. These are all the elements of the large scale map. Most of the time, all of them are selected apart from one, which is this one. That gives all the nodes in all the areas a specific point. Only land surveyors will be uh, using this probably, so leave that one unchecked. Otherwise, you can take everything you want, or you can make a small selection of that. You can make a download. Once it is ready, click download and save the file. Once you've downloaded it, it's in your download folder and it has a name extract.zip. In my case, I already have two with that name, so this one becomes extract3. You can open this one and you see that there's a lot of GML data in this um, data set. In QGIS, you can install the BGT import plugin here. And once it is installed, it will come up with one button just like that. Click the button, don't download, but use an zip data that you've already downloaded. You select the right file, open it. Now you just have to name this. So we're going to make a new geo package. I'll just do that here. I'll call this one uh, BGT, nothing else. And there we go. This might take some time depending on the size of the data you have. But once the data is there, we'll have a full BGT data set, including all the visualization that we need. So here we are. As you can see, we have a little more data than we asked for. 
that is because this base registration comes in tiles. Just like the height information, this also has tiles, in this case about one by one kilometer. So how much detail is there actually in this large scale base map? Let's have a look at that. We'll zoom into the market in Delft. And here you can see that there's quite a few things popping up as we zoom in further. For example, here you see there are some benches here. There are bicycle standards. There's a garbage bin here, an underground fire hydrant you can see. So if you zoom in, you see more detail. If you are wondering what this is exactly, all these stripes here on the market, that is, you can see it's part of the pavement. Different colors, different stones have different well, entries on the map. So let's zoom in a bit and see what everything is. For example, one of those garbage bins. If we look at one of those garbage bins, what happens? So we click on it and we see that we select several objects at the same time. So there's one called a road, or actually there's two parts of road, but there's also this one. From this garbage bin, as you can see here, you can find quite a few other variables as well. There's even a unique identifying feature here. If you would Google this and this would be indexed by Google, this exact number would point only to this garbage bin. So we have some good information on every object that we have in the street nowadays. And that is working with the large scale base map. Now the question of course is, how can you use this data set in your project? Well, look at it this way. The level of detail is immense. I mean, we have the whole of the Netherlands here at a level of detail of about, well, let's say up to 10 centimeters. You can see all the nooks and crannies in the church here. So there's a good opportunity for you to make use of that level of detail. Another thing is because the data set is separated in all different object types, you can make smart selections. You could just download only the water, for example, or only the roads or a combination of those. You can make this work for your own project by selecting the right things and using the level of detail that we have here in order to get great maps of your area and great insights in how it actually works. You could use this data as a nice backdrop or you could use it to make a good 3D model out of it. You could also use this as a basis for analysis as it has a lot of detail and a lot of different information. Anyway, it's important that you know that this data set is out there and that you're able to use it in a way that fits your project needs. Enjoy working with this large scale data set.